Hi, I'm Leanne Bridges, and I'm author, speaker, and transformation coach. I help people who um, to really step into their divine power, awaken to their purpose, and really reach their potential, whether they're changing their careers, um, wanting to start a business, more of a, a heart-based business, or in their leadership or just simply in life wanting to make a change that will help them bring more abundance and joy more meaning and fulfillment to their lives so today i want to talk about like how are you feeling this has been a crazy crazy time uh, we've heard all of the adjectives unprecedented um, all the different things and just want to check in with you to see how are you feeling as we're moving into the last two weeks of the year and we're moving into the darkest days of the year and so what does that mean to you and how can you manage through this time in your greatest light and greatest joy so many people are feeling a lot of fear a lot of frustration exhaustion confusion uh, disappointment as we're leading up to the holiday season many people are not able to travel or see loved ones and so forth so what do you do to manage through that well, for me, I have one thing that I do every day that I want to share with you that has helped me through this time. It helped me through the loss of my husband many years ago and helped me to um, not only start a heartfelt business, manage it when times are really tough, raise my kids on my own, um, run a household, be able to do everything that I want to do that can you know, take a lot of energy and be stressful even in these stressful times, but be able to do it with um, some calm, not stress, <laughs> and really be able to reach uh, for greater and greater growth and evolution for myself. And so what does that look like? Well, there's one thing that I do every single day. And if you've been following me for a bit, you might know what that is. And it's something that we hear about all the time, but I can tell you, I know very, very few people that practice it on a daily basis. Even the most spiritual people, the most the people that have been on the path for many years is a moment, uh, a few moments of stillness to connect with themselves every day. So this is a practice, something that is not necessarily that easy to do. That's why so few people actually do it. But I really believe that it has been my source of great calmness and peace and inspiration and ability to juggle and manage many things and many stressful things. So what does that look like? So stillness, some people you might call mindfulness or meditation. But a lot of times when we hear those words, mindfulness or meditation, we kind of get an idea, okay, that means sitting on a cushion and I got to quiet my mind and I can't quiet my mind. So let's take, let's step back from that a bit and say, what is it that you can do? And first of all, before we do that, why is my cat rattling papers in the back of me? Why is stillness important? So when we can connect quietly to ourselves just for a few moments a day, it first and foremost helps to calm our nervous system. How many of you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you're on? Your mind's going, you flip on your, your device, you got your emails going, you're picking up your coffee, you're running the kids and that type of thing. How do you think that starts your day when you start like this? Your day is set in motion like that until you come home, maybe you have a drink, a glass of wine or gin or whatever, sit in front of the TV, and then there's more chatter coming at you. And then you go to bed and maybe you need something to help you sleep. A lot of people have really difficult sleep patterns. So it's this constant barrage from the outside of information, of stimulation. And we've got to a point in society where we don't even know what stillness feels like, looks like, and it almost scares us. Why? Um, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine today. In particular, we, you know, there's so many people that just keep the, the TV and the news on all the time, whenever they're in the family room, in the next room, or, or sports, or music, always playing. There's nothing wrong with listening to all these things, but when it's always there, it's always a background noise. There's no stillness. There's no space. There's no spaciousness for you to really connect with yourself. And a lot of people don't want to do that because that means that sometimes things come up that they don't want to deal with in that space, or they, they have feeling of boredom, or what am I going to do if I'm not doing something? 
we are such doers rather than beers. We're not doings, we're beings. <laughs> so, um, so just let's talk a little bit about stillness and what that could look like. And if you could imagine that you could do a lot more actually in your day, feel a lot more of fulfillment, calmer, connect more connected to yourself, to others, to your body, if you had a few moments of stillness, what that would look like to changing your life and how that would how that could benefit you. So for me, what I do every morning, it's the very first thing I do. So I, I uh, don't look at my, my devices. I wake up, um, unfortunately, I wake up mo mostly with an alarm, but more and more I'm, I'm doing it naturally. That's the best thing because you're waking up in already more stillness than an alarm that wakes you up. And then if you can do that, then not going to any of your device, not going to email, anything work and taking finding a space in your home that you can be still, be quiet, a place that brings um, comfort, maybe uh, beauty. I sometimes change. I have one place in particular in my home that looks out onto my property that I, I go to in the morning. But now that it's the holiday season, um, I have the lights off and just the lights on the Christmas tree and around, and I sit in stillness with that and watch the sunrise. And so what, what do you do once you're in stillness? Well, you don't have to do anything. It, you can take a tea or coffee and just be quiet and just listening, listening to the sounds in, in the house, listening to your heart, listening to your breath. It doesn't take very much. You might start to notice your mind going. So then you start to listen to the mind. What is it saying? Listen from an observer point of view rather than getting caught up in it. And it's just noticing, oh, there's my thoughts about the day starting to come. Can I let that go a little bit? notice um, when we're in stillness, we can notice a lot more about how we feel in our bodies. Are we feeling comfortable? There, is there part of our body that's not feeling comfortable? And what is that telling us about, you know, our hip, all, all parts of our body tells us something about um, something that might be out of balance. So for example, I get hip problems sometimes, and I know that's me not being able to move forward and swing and be flexible in something that's happening in my life. Um, there's so many things like that where our body is telling us if we just in stillness listen and ask the question, what are you trying to tell me? I need to slow down. I need to make more space for this in my life. So being in stillness, no matter how you want to do it, just being quiet, you can, you can also do some guided meditations using things like YouTube. There's so many things available to you. Or you can... Um, even to spend a little bit of time do, reading something that's very inspirational. So just doesn't have to be 10 pages, but even a page or half a page or, or a poem, something, and then to be still afterwards, to just take it in, <clears throat> not to just go to the next thing and the next thing, to just look at, listen, or listen to something very inspirational, short two, three minutes, and, um, and then just kind of pause and experience it. What, what this ha does on a daily basis when we do it every day is that it helps us connect with who we are and our truth. One of the things that's really a challenge right now is that there's so much information coming at us about, um, about uh, COVID, about lockdowns, about uh, the, the vaccine, about everything, about the, the environment, about business, about the economy. And it can be very scary. And fear is one of our biggest enemies, if not our biggest enemies. As, as a, if you just think about your human body, fear causes anxiety and stress, which, which keeps your stress hormones going. And that creates a lot of disease and disease in your body. So one of the most important benefits of stillness is to try to work on your fear. And if you're wondering if you have fear or not, <laughs> I'll, I'll welcome you to just watch how you're interacting in, in life. And often you might, I hear people say, I'm not in fear, but I see them judging and lashing out at people. Recently, I saw someone who I thought was really very spiritual on the path, you know, very really shaming and berating people on Facebook about the, if only you would put, follow the, um, the rules, then all of us would be safe. But those people who are not following rules are causing all of us to be um, locked down even further or miss Christmas. So, you know, it, it, you can see that 
that is coming, you know, if we look at that from a place of compassion, is to say that person is in fear. They're in fear, they're in upset, they're in judgment. And that comes from a place of imbalance, not in peace within themselves to say, this is okay. They're looking for someone else to blame, pushing that shame and blame out. So if you're finding you're judging other people who isn't, well, that just reflects in all of us. There is that fear. There's the need to want to control out, outer circumstances to make ourselves feel safe, happy, content, and so forth. So if we can reverse that and look within and be still and find that stillness within, it reduces our fear. We can connect to our inspiration, what we need to do in any moment, and to our real truth of what's going on. Um, we, you know, what's going on, you can hear all the time different perspectives happening, but when we can really connect to, does that resonate with me? Is that my knowing? Is that my truth? that helps us to reduce our fear as well, rather than listening to someone else that's telling you something that's fearful or another judgment that's coming out to us that's coming from another's place of woundedness, another place, person's place of fear. If we can just, in stillness, help us to be more compassionate and say, first with ourselves, I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling judgment. I'm feeling shame or blame. Can I be just okay with that because of the circumstances that we're going under? It's very stressful right now. Can I actually let it go? Can I see the other person woundedness and lashing out at me or acting in fear and in control and trying to control? And can I let that go? And when we can do that, it helps us to be at much more peace within ourselves. And when we're at peace, we create a ripple effect of peace in the world. When we're in judgment and fear and control, we create a ripple effect of that. So what the world needs right now more than anything is each one of us to be in our own stillness, to be connecting to our deep compassion that each human being has, that for ourselves first, and then to be able to extend that outward, to be in connection with our divine inspiration it's because when we're in stillness, we know much better of what it is that we're here to do at any moment, how we are um, serve ourselves, our family, and our society with every word, deed, whatever we're, we're doing. When we, get, when we work from a place of inspiration rather than a place of fear or judgment. And from there, we, in that, that peaceful place, we feel greater joy. So consider just taking a little bit of time every day, five minutes to start with, to be in stillness, and to just feel that beauty, how it feels in your body. And I guarantee you, if you do it a few times, you'll start to get addicted to it. That stillness feels really good. It feels so calming. It feel, you feel a sense of gratitude. You start to connect with what's already in your life and what you're loving. And, there's, and you can explore different ways to do stillness and contemplation. One of the things I do a lot is I connect with my guides on the other realm um, and, and get advice. I often do journaling to help me do that, where I just write down what comes to me, asking questions. There's just so many ways to be in stillness and to be in that quiet space. But I'll say that it is, what, for me, it's been the the most important tool to help me in the, in the most difficult times, but also in, in wonderful times. It's kept me balanced. It's kept me through this last year, being able to go through the roller coaster, observe what's happening, and come out the other side each time with each wave <laughs> that happens, each wave that triggers whatever in me, my own fear, my own anger, aggression. It helps to bring me back to myself. So I invite you to take some time for stillness. If you'd like to learn more about it, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. I have lots of programs to help you with the transformation you might be going through at this time. And in particular, this time of year, as we're going into the solstice and the four days of darkness that go from the 21st to the 25th, 
that's a perfect time to be in stillness. I hope you can enjoy this time and uh, start to vision what you'd like to do in the new year. With love and gratitude, I wish you all a wonderful holiday season. Namaste.